completing the square. Um, now, this is where the quadratic formula actually comes from. I'm not going to show you how they come up with the quadratic formula from completing the square because it is really complicated. Um, but if you've ever wondered, well, how, who on earth figured out that negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a is going to give you the answers? Well, it came from this process of completing the square, um, and that's why it works for any quadratic. But again, to solve any quadratic, you can graph it and find the zeros. Okay? But it may ask you a question about a, a step in between here for completing the square. So, you really, you have these steps here on your yellow paper, so you don't need to write them down. I just want to talk through this, and I want you to read them as I'm talking through them. Um, but completing the square is a method used to turn any quadratic expression into a perfect square trinomial. Okay, when we were talking about factoring, remember we had that special case of a perfect square trinomial. It was um, the one that factored, and you got the exact same factors, so we wrote it as that squared. That's the key to this process right here. So number one is we got to make sure A, the coefficient of the quadratic term, uh, the x squared term, is 1. That's number one. After that, we're going to divide B, the coefficient of our linear term, or our just plain x, by 2. We're going to square that number, and we're going to add it to both sides. Um, when we get to the equation part, but that's going to become the constant term. And then we're going to factor the perfect square trinomial. So we're not going to use the yellow sheet right at this moment. Uh, I want you to look at the white sheet and look at the very first problem. Okay, it says to uh, find the value that completes the square and then write it as a perfect square trinomial. So let's look at our steps. Step one says make sure A is 1. Well, we don't have anything in front of our y squared, so we're good there. So step two is we're going to divide B. Remember, this is B right here. We're going to divide that by 2. So 30 divided by 2 is 15. And then we're going to square that number. 15 squared, I think, is 225. So let me double check. 15 squared is 225. Okay. That is the number that completes the square. That's the number that goes in the blank there. And then if we're going to write that as a perfect square trinomial, it is y plus 15 squared. Okay? This number right here is always going to be the number that we squared. Bless you. And this sign right here is going to be the sign in our factor. Okay, the last number is always going to be positive because we squared something. Anytime you square a number, you get a positive. Uh, but the first sign tells you what sign goes in your parentheses. Okay, let's look at number five. Okay, let's look at number five. X squared minus 11X. Let's figure out what needs to go in that blank and how to factor it. So uh, a is 1. We've got just plain x squared, so we're good there. We need to divide b by 2. So b is technically it's negative 11. I'm not going to worry about the negative right now, okay? So I'm going to divide it by 2. 11 is not even, so that doesn't divide evenly. So we're just going to leave it as 11 over 2. Then we're going to square it. When you square a fraction, you square the numerator, that's 121, and you square the denominator, that's 4. So that is the number that completes the square, that becomes our constant on the end. And then to factor it, it would be x, this one is minus, and we squared 11 over 2, so that's what goes in our parentheses every single time, okay? So make sure that leading coefficient is 1. Divide b by 2. If it divides evenly, great. Square that number. If it doesn't, that's okay. Just leave it. Square it. That number goes on the end. 
the number root squared goes inside the factor, and the sign, the first sign, is the sign inside the parentheses. Okay. So well, let's just practice with that part. Of it. What if a doesn't equal one? We know that that comes up a lot. Uh, it's very rare that your a is actually one. Uh, because those are very simple problems. So what happens if they put, you know, for example, a 7 in there? Well, all we have to do is factor out our leading coefficient, and then we're going to proceed as we normally do. Okay, so looking at number 9, so we've got 7n squared plus 14n. Our first step is we've got to factor out the GCF of 7. So we take out a 7, that leaves us with n squared plus 2n. And then we're going to complete the square with what's inside the parentheses. Our b is now 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. So 1 is the number that completes the square. And if we factor this, keep the 7 in front. We squared the 1, so that's the number that goes inside of our parentheses as well. 1 is kind of that weird case where it's the number that completes the square, and then it's also the number that goes in our factor. Okay, So don't let that throw you. It's just because 1 squared is 1. Okay.